Yo, I'm a luck. Hola, I'm a hola, I'm a Yo, I'm a luck. Yeah, me. That is. Yo, I'm a dollar. I'm a carry on to yours. Yo, I'm a dollar. Yo, I'm a Elohim. Curios to yours, my dear greater. Curios to yours, bestos. Elda et Yehova, yel emuna Yehova. Ibas lian kurios, otios, opanta kreta. Baslios, baslian kai kurios, kurion. Yehova dabar halal, Elohim dabar halal. Yehova Elohim, gadol gadol gebura. El Elohim Israel, Isus Christos. Ton Christon isun ton kurion. Kurion ni mahagion panta kreta, gadol gadol gebura. Ehova Ishmal Kam, Ehova Shamma, Yel Nakum Yehova, El Nakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava, Gava. Triembos Yehova, Isus Christos, Pantecreta, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Morarosh Nasa, Elohim, Elohim, Ileilai Shalut, Yehova Malak, Yehova Malak, Olam, Olam, Ad. Yehova Eleheno, Yehova Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Zoan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes. Dikaesune, Enisus Christos, Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa, Pantacreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebura. Yehova ihe Elohim, Yehova ihe Elohim. Ile la eshalot, Isus Christos, Yehova Malak, Gadol Gadol, Gebura. Derek Emunabakar, Mishfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing event to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them, who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing why Lord God the Father has delivered us from this present evil world and put us into his marvelous kingdom where we shall shine as light luminaries not of the world being present but the one who is away from the world sanctified through the truth. So, dear brethren, let our moderation be made known to all men, because Lord is near. We shall continue after this prayer, sanctify yourselves to look upon what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us on today's date, in every past, to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer, so that our moderation be made known to all men. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto the marvelous grace, O Lord, to learn the truth. The things which are prepared and kept for us day by day, O Lord, in a sovereign will, so that we could become to know the woe which we have made, that we shall make your name known unto the entire congregation and fill the earth with thy glory. For that cause, O Lord, you have given much more than we need, the player of Baltimore privileges, 
in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the great word of God in the completed can of scripture, so that Lord being sanctified through the truth, we can be the one being baptized to be identified with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to make known to this people that we have put on Christ and being heavenly citizens, that we have the path of showing eternal life to them. At a Lord, many people are walking contrary to the word and you know very well, Lord. And for that cause, Father, we have made this woe that when you deliver us, we are going to destroy those cities, the cities where there is no proper Bible doctrine. So, Father, the things which are prepared and kept for us on today's state as we study them, we pray them entering the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, to challenge, and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, in verse number 4, as many people would love to quote about these words, emphasizing that, Rejoice in the Lord always. And the people, they know very well, emphasizing what is the meaning of the word rejoice. There can be no proper rejoice, the word called to be Cairo. And the meaning of this word Cairo, it emphasizes Samak, or it could be like the word which we can call as Simka, which is nothing but a spontaneous expression of excitement and cheer. How can you get in this world such cheer? The people are in search of the programmer who could go to in return be your Holy Spirit, who can make up your body to be associated to fill the gap between your thoughts and the things pertaining to the execution of your body. And they cannot understand this programmer is nothing but Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through his mind being revealed now in the voice of Lord God the Holy Spirit called to be the knowledge of Bible doctrine in the original languages of the scriptures. So many people do not know the programmer is Lord God the Holy Spirit. The great impact what we can have is the impact of what we can call being let known to know, to know the world, the truth and the truth what you speak to believe. It has a great impact than what the people can call to be loved. Tomorrow, in the presence of Lord God the Father, the greatest intensity could be your authenticity. And that authenticity is nothing but your brethren, your truth. So who is truth? What is truth? Christ our Lord our God said, I am the way, the truth and the life. We are not here to make the people to come back and look upon what is the truth. But we are here to tell Christ, our Lord, our God, is the truth, and whether they believe it or not, it is left to them. When they know the truth and they believe not, it is left for them. If they would believe the truth, and if they would realize that this is the way, then surely they have a life of what we can call to rejoice. Because no matter whatever may be the pressure upon your day-to-day -day affairs of this life, upon your blood, as long as you have on this earth the blood, the blood is the main key factor where many people are thinking, that the things pertaining to the transfusion of your blood, you can once again become young and fresh and bigger because they ought to look upon what could be the things in the blood that could become to be composing of all the chemicals and all the things what Lord God the Father has made in this blood so that they can say that if blood is pure, everything is, will be pure. So any problem, they want to cross-check with the blood, including your diabetic or anything or any problem with your lipid profiles. So they want to just cross-check with the blood. But here, the word Simka, what we find to be the superabundance of happiness, it is possible when he said, you have been put such sort of a pressure upon your blood, but you have a wall of fortification, which can resist any heartache, which can take up any suffering. And that wall of fortification is nothing but purely the word of God. Without the word of Lord God, there can be nothing that can take up the pressure in this blood or in this body. People are so stupid that they think that they can have some medicines on this earth or they think to have some therapies on this earth like laughing therapies or enjoying therapies or you know all the worries of this world that they want to put aside and they want to think that let's enjoy life. They cannot get this rejoice. The true rejoice is when, when you're able to fulfill your commitment with Lord God the Father. Your day-by-day -day communion, breath-by-breath -breath fellowship in Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You have to make up yourself separate from the world. 
If you are not able to make up that commitment with the word of Lord God every day, though you have a very costly bed to sleep, you cannot get that good consciousness of sleep because day by day you are missing out your marks. Why you are missing out? There the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons. And that adult sons with earnest expectation, what the creation is awaiting is nothing but the people who should come, they should build up a wall of fortification like discipleship program. And that discipleship program is nothing but your brethren, no matter whatever may be the pressure, whether it may rain or shine, whether it may be a life or death, every day you are called to carry your cross and this is the testimony which you have on this earth. Once if you get out of this world by not giving this testimony to Lord God the Father, then no matter however you may weep and wail in the presence of Lord God the Father saying that, Lord grant me some more time, I will go back to the earth, I will be once again a faithful witness for you, I will fulfill my woes and I will come back to perform. You know what Lord God the Father would say, these people are liars to me. And already you, all the time you give once or twice a chance to trust anyone. But Lord God the Father, till the day you die, He's giving you chance to trust. The same thing what we can say, many converts on the cross as well. The man who truly repented said, Lord, he remembers Kurios. And he said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom when you come. And he knows very well what is the meaning of that when he says, Lord, remember me. Because he truly repented. He didn't have a chance to come down and prove with his deeds so that he's been faithful to the Lord God. Because when we're believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Titus chapter 2 emphasizes that they shall live a world within, a world without, and a world above. Godly nature, pious nature. And those natures which are very, very essential for us, so that within and without and the world above, we have to be accountable. So, dear brethren, all the time he goes to emphasize for us to look that the life that you're living, up to what extent it's really worth, are you able to realize your true calling in Christ? You have been set apart from the world, and what's your power? Your power, day by day, give an account, make your consciousness clear. So that we can be accountable to Lord God the Father to say, all the days of this life, He's been able to give you that permission at least once, at least once you can make it up. Have a true heart of repentance. You know, when Peter preached, they came up in Acts chapter 3 to say, What we shall do, Lord? And he said, repent and be baptized. Know your new position in Christ. Know your identification in Christ. Come back, take up your cross every day. Look upon to perform the will of Lord God the Father every day. The true identification in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that now your new position in Christ emphasizes you have been separated from the world. Therefore now you have a conviction ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to make your soul and spirit to understand that you cannot survive if there is no word of God given to you every day. You cannot come to prove to the world that you rejoice. Having a million of dollars or billions of dollars you think you are happy. The world will not know that because the true rejoice, Cairo, is nothing but you're having a great ability of building up a wall of fortification where with Christ, O Lord of God, is like a wall of fire and you are showing forth your true spiritual life because every day, no matter however may be the pressure, every day, how much of the blood has been sucked out in pressure, he would say, need not worry on that because it is Lord God who is going to strengthen us in our heart. If you can look upon that verse in Psalms chapter 10, you could realize how the wicked will reign over us and that Lord God the Father will prepare our heart. So he says in verse number 17, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. What will be the desire of the humble? The entire of energy to give a great expression of joy in our body. And who is the humble? Who completely fix their eyes in the vigor and valor upon Christ. They have nothing else to rule over them. You are humble when you are going to have your every viewpoint of thought in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. 
So he says, the people who are going to have the desire of the humble, Lord God, what does he do? He goes to prepare their heart. And the word prepare, kun, it meant to say what? He's going to make them to be joining as disciples and growing up into grammatias in a day-by-day -day procedure of Bible doctrine to be given for them. Today you have something, tomorrow you have something to learn. That's why we need to look upon these great words in Ephesians chapter 6. When Lord God the Holy Ghost will give us these words in verse number 17 to say that the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. The Greek word over here is Rima and the meaning of that word Rima is nothing but day by day prescription portion given to you by the Holy Spirit of God for that particular day prepared and kept as they had in the wilderness manna for 40 years. So they have day by day, day by day portion given for them. So in the day-by-day -day portion, what they take, for example, over here you can find the Rimata Declaration of Bible Doctrine, the Hebrew word Daber, what does it meant to say? Your every thought in your body should be renovated. Because we have a work with the renovation standards. When Lord God the Father has delivered you or set you free, the point of that is that you are making a vow. To say that, Lord, in Psalms chapter 22, in verse number 25, Lord, in thy great congregation I will make thy name known to the people. And knowing or making known the name of my Lord God to the people is nothing but spreading his glory. How can he spread his glory and fill the earth with the glory? He says, with you people who have this daber, who have this knowledge. So what they do, they say, Lord, when you deliver us, we vow saying that we are going to destroy the cities. Not meant to say any cities to be destroyed, but over here it meant to say, Lord, we are going to remove the distorted thinking of their mind. You give, you give us these nations in our hand. When you deliver them in our hand, O oh Lord, they find this oath in Numbers chapter twenty in verse number two, or twenty-one in verse number two. They said, Lord, you deliver us, who all the children of Israel, they come over here to tell. In Numbers chapter 21, they make up a vow to say, And Israel vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If we will indeed deliver, that meant to say that Nathan, Nathan, with authority in the vigor and valor, O Lord, what they have. You are making us to change our authority through the word of God. You have given us an impact to the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to deliver these people. So he said, Nathan, Nathan. So when he delivered me, he said, Lord, this people into my hand, the people who are having their viewpoint concerning their blood, they don't have the viewpoint concerning the spirit. That's why the creation, he says, they're just earnestly waiting with a great expectation. And what is that they're, get, they're, they're waiting with a great expectation? In Romans chapter 8, in verse number 19, he's emphasizing the point that they should be people who are going to come with the standards of the word we call to be apakaradokio. And what happens over in apakaradokio? They have been called to be kulkiel. And the meaning of kulkiel is nothing but their brethren. They have been themselves in pain with the distorted thinking what they're having in their life and what manner of a distorted thinking they have they have been twisted they are in anguish they have been whirling so they have been in the process of their own uh, own destruction so they are waiting longingly because they are waiting to see who will come and start up a wall of fortification for discipleship program in Christ so this is what they have been waiting every time because the word kulki el meant to say the build up a wall of fortification like a discipleship program every day. So these people who are having their viewpoint in the blood, he says they're having the viewpoint in the blood, but not in the viewpoint of their soul and spirit, which Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone can transform their thinking when they're able to take up the word of Lord God every day accurately. They don't have that process of life. But we have over here to say, Kul KL, meant to say what? They're earnestly waiting. The difference between the people on the earth and the people of Christ, he said, you are not of the world. So what we are, he says in simple terms, we belong to the heavenly standards. And in those heavenly standards, what it is happening? He would say, in simple terms, dear brethren, you have been given the book. 
and what is that book the book is dear brother on nothing but the lord's mind and this lord's mind is our greatest heritage of all time on this earth if ever you want to possess anything on this earth if you're proud of possessing anything on this earth you look upon we are not of the world you possess the word of god you have the word of lord god you really have something of eternal value you are not on the road for your spiritual failure when you are on the road to spiritual failure like lot what we read yesterday this man is emphasizing the standards of what we can call having the wrong perspective first he is investing his time and energy in those things which don't produce them back of eternal value and then he is having to flirt with the world so that he is going to move unto sodom and then he is going to be ensnared by the system of those people because the ensnared christian is thinking becomes twisted and distorted that's what we're able to look when the people of this israelites in numbers chapter 21 in verse number 2 they say lord deliver this nations into our hand and we shall destroy the cities the word destroy over there meant to say what lord once again we will establish back there your thinking the people have been ensnared so the people who have been ensnared they are going to be in such distorted thinking so when i've been there over here the fourth road will be all the time to get out and lose everything so dear brethren he says you are not of the world if you are in the world you will seek the things of the world the same thing in john chapter 18 and 19 also we look if my people were of were of that world they would not hand me over they would surely indeed come to deliver me so the people whom lord god the father has has inserted this work he would say first thing build up a wall of fortification you renovate your head make up your blood to look upon the viewpoint of eternal value all the time because every soul you meet either it's going to end up in heaven or in hell therefore your moderation be made known to all men so what sort of a moderation it could be he says in philippians chapter 4 in verse number 5 so that you are manner of life your behavior of life and what could be greater than your manner of life because he knows the word over here it's meant to say epi aks and the word epi echo or epi aks is nothing but your brethren which meant to say for us as salak and what is that the word salak is nothing but making up no matter whatever it is you always stood under any pressure for discipleship program and to build up a wall of fortification for discipleship program though the people they murmurs Though the people come back to conspire against you, you did not hesitate, but rather you went along to do the will of Lord God the Father by making up discipleship program. Today, the churches have lost what could be the moderation. The moderation is nothing but if there is a church. A church is a place where they can get eternal value of information, the truthful information which they can believe, and that has a great impact of intensity. and today the words of lord god he said in john chapter 6 in verse number 63 their spirit they're going to give you life you know the words of lord god alone what we find in the entire canon of scripture from genesis 1 1 to revelation 20 to 21 they really transform you and the people are not able to realize that where is the moderation where is the transformation happens it happens in the church as ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 to 11 where the people come to learn the manifold wisdom of god the polypyclos wisdom of lord god but today the churches haven't become to teach what is the manifold wisdom of lord god day by day because they never understand the real importance of this great word which christ our lord of god has given for us in this book this book is a book of glory this book is book of eternity it is a book of all the books where the people can never think what could be in this world though many people tried their best to translate the bible but now it is the bona fide duty of the so called pastor teacher standing in the pulpits to simply make known the moderation and that cannot be done dear brethren if you are not a grammatious program oriented pastor teacher for example if you can look joining as disciples and growing up into grammatious having the bona fide gift of lord god the father whose birth whose 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 real purpose of life is birth begins before the foundation of the world being separated for Christ from the mother's womb itself and sanctified and kept apart for the lord's work with his bona fide gift so that they speak nothing but the truth 
and they believe what they speak because the tongue is the tongue of the learned given by Lord God to speak the things so that they can be in very to realize what is the true refreshment they can find in the word of Lord God. Because over here, if you can understand in Psalms chapter 119, you have some of the words where Lord God the Father would teach to us to emphasize in simple terms what manner of life that he has planned for us. He says in Psalms 119, when you go through all the sufferings of this life, in verse 141 and following particularly, he would say over here, saying that, Trouble and anguish have taken hold of me, at thy commandments are my delight. And therefore he says, thy righteous, The righteousness of the testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. And then you see over here in verse 145, I cried with my whole heart, hear me, O Lord. And what do you say? He says, I will shamir, I will guard. It's called to be natser. And the word over here to natser is meant to say, with all of my strength, with all of my pressure, whatever it could be in my life, I would love to renovate my thinking. That's what Lord God the Father does. Every time he said, cry with your whole heart. And he said, Lord, hear me. I will keep thy statutes. And again he says in verse 146, unto thee I cried, save me and I shall keep. The first one keep over here is not said. The second time what he keeps over here is called to be shamer. That meant to say what my thought process in my blood will be all the time renovated in Bible doctrine alone. I will not say, I will shamir what thy testimonies and thy prescription demands call to be the chalk. So every time he, hooks, uh, he wakes up and he cries, Lord, I hoped in thy word, in thy word, in thy word. If it is not the word of Lord God, we have nothing on this earth to really survive. So that he says, Lord, let your moderation be made known. No matter what may be the pressure, Lord, every believer in Christ should be associated to become your discipleship program. And today, people are not at all happy to build up discipleship program. The wall of fortification is not talking about discipleship program. Their thinking is not talking about discipleship program. They forgot what the woe they have taken. The woe what Lord God the Father intends is that there shall be no God any other apart from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he is the only one who said I am the way, the truth and the life. But what, are, what is happening? People are not able to really look the impact of a true Christian, what he can have on the people of this unbelieving mind. A true Christian is called to be a heavenly citizen. The way how they caught hold of Isaiah when he said, emphasizing he has the words of living Lord of a God. Where can we go? The same thing he emphasized in Isaiah saying that we know that you are having a true God. We shall come with you. Lead us to that God. But today the people are talking. They don't have light in them. And many people in the present Christendom do not worry at all to know what is the light in the word of Lord God. To understand what is the standard of the will of Lord God. They never realize that. And yet, dear brethren, Lord God the Father intends make your moderation. Epi eka salak. No matter what may be the pressure, where is the discipleship program? Because there is a reason for discipleship program. That discipleship program, dear brethren, he says over there in Romans chapter 8 in verse number 19, with earnest expectation, apokardioka. And the word over there, what we can find in Romans chapter 18, 8 in verse number 19, he meant to say, dear brethren, that these people should be associated with the purpose of making a wall of fortification in discipleship program. That's the very earnest expectation of this creature, which they have been waiting, waiting, apokardioka. And what they happen over there, they come every day with the intention, Lord, teachers, 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 nothing but doctrine, because apocalypse is what we get over here. It meant to say, dear brethren, that no matter what, whatever it is, they shall have their viewpoint to be renovating doctrine. When there is something which has been unveiled or told, even the message is what we preach, your viewpoint of life should be 
ch- should be gone to change your thinking. That's Christianity is all about. Renovate your thinking. That has to be metamorphomai rather than metaschematizoans. That's how you can find the great gift of a pastor teacher in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 through 14 emphasizing the reason why he has given till all could come to the unity in the knowledge of the Son of God. All should come to the unity in the knowledge of Son of God. Different personalities Lord God the Father has used. But rather, he would tell, emphasizing only one thing, all should come to the confirmation of the image of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in your lives. Different personalities. The problem is people are not able to believe the truth. And they die in their own unbelief. You know, when Christ, O Lord of our God, did so many great miracles, he said, Do you believe? Are you knowing that? Or do you believe that I am capable of doing it? Then the one of the one of the man would say for his child, saying that, Lord, though I have I have unbelief, help me to believe. You know, people are not able to realize your life is not for the earth. The things of this earth are absolute vanity. You break up relationship with Lord God the Father, you come in then with Lord God the Father, then for sure, dear brethren, you are not going to enjoy the eternal value. You would love to have your time rightly beating around the bush, but not to the bush. You're not coming straight to the point because all the times of your life you're going to invest your time and energy in those things which are absolute worthless. So you have to wake up. You have to consider being baptized in Christ. You have a new position. Being baptized in the name of Lord God the Father and Lord God the Son and Lord God the Holy Spirit. You have a new identification with the heavenly citizens of the great standards of heavenly realm. Therefore, dear brethren, when the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons, the Holy Spirit of Lord God can witness with your human spirit that you belong to Lord God the Father, provided when you are a technon believer in Christ. And that's what today many people are not able to realize. He says in Romans chapter 8 in verse number 16, that you are technon, that meant to say the way how rabbis could call to the standards of what we can say their students or disciples. The Hebrew word men, that meant to say about their body and their vigor and valor is all the time called to be as a process of eled. The meaning of the word eled is nothing but their discipleship program to get every thought into captivity for Christ. That's the word technon. Their body, their vigor and valor. We have any strength, you have any purpose in this body to live, you would say the first priority is to go and join as a disciple. And people may say they're very intelligent enough. They don't have time to come every day to Bible class, every day to pay back the tithe to Lord God the Father. And they're so happy to spend their time in the details of this earth. They'll be very, very clever in all of those things. But you know what the word of Lord God said? Your spirit is not being witnessed by Lord God the Holy Spirit that you're children of God. That's where you fail. When your spirit is not able to witness with the Holy Spirit of God that you are the children of God, that meant to say what your life is worthless. And how could be a proof that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, witnesses you that you are his children? You will take up your cross every day and come to learn the word of Lord God. Joining as disciples, you grow up into grammatics in the presence of Lord God. That's how the things happen, dear brethren, every day. Because the creation is awaiting. And when the creation is awaiting for the manifestations of the adult sons, the people will murmur. Whenever there is a truth which has to be executed, people will surely murmur for that. That's what we find over here in Exodus chapter 16 in verse number 2. What exactly is the meaning of the word murmur over here? He says, the whole congregation, the children of Israel, murmured against Moses. So what did they do? The people should have been witness to get every thought into captivity for Christ. But these children of Israel, though they had no matter what may be the pressure in their life to carry their cross and become disciples, they have some sort of a bull energy, they started to murmur. What is murmuring? The word is called to be lun lian, and the word is translated twice to murmur, to murmur. Of a murmuring, they are murmuring. What they are murmuring? Who is is being seldom caring about discipleship program. Who wants today nowadays Christendom if you can look. Who wants today the vigor and valor for discipleship program. That's murmuring. That's what they do. They have been associated with the standards of what we can call murmuring every time. Who has been caring about discipleship program. Who wants. 
or who looks. There should be a tabernacle of witness. Today you may be having your churches and you may be having beautiful names upon your churches. Some would say Baptist or Pentecost or Brethren or having very, very private churches with a private name, but Pentecost or small congregations. You know, the people they think will keep Antioch, Acts 29, one of the church name. So like that, they have many ministries name and many names. And these names, whatsoever it is, like the word even people would call Mahaniam, many names they have Bereka or XYZ name. You know, what is the real congregation for the Lord God? A real congregation for the Lord God, having though many names, it should be the viewpoint to get every thought into captivity for Christ. And just not getting thought, but it has to be executed. That's what we find the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. The first one, conviction ministry, so that you can come back to believe in Christ. After conviction ministry, what? Edification ministry. After edification ministry, what? Manifesting your complete ministry. A complete ministry of growing up into grammatias and in return you are going and making disciples of all the nations. You know, first of all, the product has been cleansed. That's your conviction ministry. The product has been prepared from the raw materials. That is the edification ministry. Afterwards, that ministry has been put or your life has been put into test. After test, it is going to make once again the same things. This is what you have been called over here. The conviction ministry. And then the edification ministry. And then you have Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to make up all for you all to understand the process of what we can call in simple terms as your complete ministry. How it could be complete if you don't make disciples? Do you think you're really the product of Lord God? If you're really the product of Lord God, you walk in the footsteps of Christ. You make others also to walk in that. That's the meaning of the word baptizo. That's what Christ, our Lord of God, did. Because he knows very well. He baptized you in the Holy Spirit of God. He had the Holy Spirit of God upon him on the day of baptism because that has been manifested, but he was born in the Spirit. And he goes to teach to us, being baptized in the Holy Spirit of God. This is what you're going to have your work. But today people have been set at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. After believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you have been baptized in Christ. You have been baptized in the Lord again. You have such a great life for you all to understand. And when you have been baptized in Christ, your work should begin. The very first thing what Lord God the Holy Spirit would do, He would lead you for having fasting. And today people may think fasting could be for 40 days or 40 nights because they come up with this land process. Fasting is nothing but you sacrifice everything whichever could come between you and God to take up your cross and learn Bible doctrine. You don't have time even to eat and drink because the first priority for me is to go back and look upon Bible doctrine. That's what your first priority will be all the time. So where is your Bible doctrine every time? So he says, the word over here, dear brethren, that the people murmur against such teachings. The people murmur against the real discipleship program. Today, churches have been so dull. They don't have the discipleship program at all. The pastors have been so out of the line from the word of Lord God. And they call themselves, they be ministers. These people will not be far away from the judgment of Matthew chapter 7, which could say in simple terms, saying that, Lord, didn't we prophesy in thy name? Didn't we do these miracles? Didn't we do this? healings. Didn't we do this? Didn't we do that? You know what Lord God the Father would say? Workers of iniquity depart from me. I never knew you. That will be the very, very basic, simple thing in this life. I never knew you. Because the churches have been associated with liars. They never come back to tell the truth. And what does a liar do? Liar gives Lord God an incurable pain, saying that, Why at least Lord God made man on this earth? An incurable pain. The incurable pain is that these people haven't grown up into grammatias in their lifetime. Such an incurable pain they give to Lord God the Father every time they come. That incurable pain. That's what we find in Jeremiah chapter 15. He says over here in verse number 18, dear brethren, The man whom I have made, why is my pain perpetual? Why these bodies haven't grown up to grammar tears? 
why the church age believers are not able to take up their cross. I have given them much more than the most what in the past dispensation they could have. In the past dispensation, they did not have the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Over here in the new dispensation, I have given to them the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to indwell in them. Besides that, I have given the completed can of scripture. Besides that, I have given them the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher who can teach to the right word of Lord God in iota upon iota, carrier upon carrier, word by word, line by line, precept upon precept, with proper exegesis, isogogs and categories, dispensationally to be taught. I have given you much more than more what you can ever expect in this life. I've given you great many things. Besides that, why is my pain perpetual? The word perpetual is nothing but your brethren, what we can call as netzak. The meaning of the word netzak meant to say, how can it have that strength? How can it become enduring? The power of the sin is law, where we can find that word, what he says in Romans. As the word we can find there in First Corinthians it has to be. Emphasizing what is that power they have when this sin has been reigning. And the word over there when he emphasizes, emphasizing the point that the things pertaining to that power, what it could be. The same thing over here he said, how this pain could be perpetual, how this could be in the strength. Because he knows very well, emphasizing the word in First Corinthians on Romans, it has to be. With it said, the strength of that or the power of that is the law. Because they know how to sin again, they go to sin again and they go for confession. So dear brethren, he said in First Corinthians 15, 56, it's all about the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So the word strength over here is called to be dunamis. So the strength of sin is the law. So you go to sin, you come to confess your sins. But here he said, there is no excuse for your sins. Why? Because you have been given the Holy Spirit of God, which judges you all the time to be separated from the world, from the carnal world. And it says, come back to the spiritual world for where I have designed you, where I want you all to be. But today people are not at all happy for the spiritual world in Christ. They don't have the standards of the Lord's mind. So dear brethren, he said, Why is my pain perpetual? How could the strength prevail against me? In the Old Testament he says, Because it is the, it is the strength of the law. But in the New Testament that there is no law. There is a new law. Because law has been put to death. Or put to an end on the cross. He has made it to be nailed on the cross. And he goes to give us a new law. What is that law? The law called to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The law called to be breathing in the Holy Spirit. The law called to be walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We have something new over here to understand the law. And what is that law you have every time? And you're making it to be grieved or squelched the wax, the lie. They're not able to look upon the impact of what, how, the woe which you have made before the presence of Lord God the Father. The woe which you have said, Lord, if you give me, you give me, I'll go to destroy the cities. And the word over the cities is nothing but where he meant to say that distorted thinking exists in their mind. Twisted thinking exists in their mind. So he said, Lord, you deliver us from this people. Make this people to come to my hand. Let the viewpoint and blood to come to understand in the process of the word of Lord God. How you can understand? He said, when you use your hand to get every thought into captivity for Christ, creator has made the creation and the creation can understand the simultaneous creation, which has called to be unbelievers, though we are called to be believers now. We can understand their thoughts only when we're able to get to the creator and look what is the real design and the plan of God for them. Then he says, I'm going to give you in your hand. How can you get it in your hand? If you're not able to take up your cross every day, and if you're not able to grow up into grammatics every day, and take in and write out every day Bible doctrine. Every day at least try start, start to exegete our words. You'll understand what a great depth we have from the strong code numbers given for us in the translation of the English in comparison to the Greek or Hebrew. Every day start of words to exegete. You will realize how much of a depth is there. That's how you're going to get them into their hand. People are searching for the programmer, thinking that this is what this is what could be. But the real standards of your programmer is a spirit. 
Who is that spirit? Lord God, the Holy One who goes to guide you and teach you. Then you can be intact with your hardware, software, the chemicals in your brains and the things which has been just appearing outside. It could be something very brilliant and different because Lord God the Father has called us to be kinekatesis, special spiritual species that did not exist in the earlier. We are of something of a great value that did not exist earlier. But now in the present Christendom, you have been given this privilege to be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Your body is just not a thing wherewith you can say that it has been just going to dust after a long span of time on this earth, letting away vigor and valor. That's how the sinners will reduce their life. The Bible teaches something different. The logic of the Bible is, though Caleb says he's 85 and he has in him the vigor of 40, then understand what a privilege Lord God the Father has given to them who have been programmed by the Holy Spirit of God. They have to use this body. He said, you have trained my fingers for battles. My feet will not be, will not be slipped off. It will be like a great dope power in it. And I will have the strength to be renewed like eagles. Because every human being has been given the privilege from discipleship program into Grammatius, from Grammatius program into the, into the Kiribim level of knowledge, which we read long back. The four faces. A one face, the face of a man, but you have the three faces like a lion, like an eagle, like a bull and an ox. The roaring power like a lion, the carrying capacity of a bull, no matter whatever it is. And the eye vision of an eagle where you can look upon before itself how the destroying of these nations could occur. And all these things will be in one man. And that's what you are right now in the church age. The cherubims, what you have been looking in those chapters of Ezekiel 1 or Romans, or Revelation chapter 4, he knows very well to emphasize these people are the ones who have been very, very intelligently making up their life in a breath by breath process of Holy Spirit of God guiding them and leading them to make make up their time valuable and to use their hand to make sure they're going to change the thoughts being inculcated by the world first in their brains, including by their parents. Because now they found the Creator, they have the tumblical core of relationship with God. So Lord God, the Holy Ghost would come to teach us what? Nothing but the truth. And you have the truth digged and kept in the Bible. Bible being that book of glory, Bible being that book of eternity, Bible being that book of great power, which no man can even conceive in their mind if they haven't been led by the Holy Spirit of God. Natural mind cannot conceive, soulless mind cannot look. It is only the spiritual mind can conceive when they have been led by the Holy Spirit of God, teaching spiritual things to the spiritual one so that they can discern the true purpose of this life and make up your body to be effective to the maximum glory of Lord God the Father and fulfill the desire of Lord God the Father in making the earth to be filled with His glory. And the people never believe the truth because you don't know what is the truth. The translations are just a base. Get back to the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Every bona fide gifted pastor, teacher, if they ever stand in the pulpits, they have to be male believers, not female. She has an temptation to add the word, to delete the word and to lessen the impact of the word. That's what we find the woman Eve. Therefore, it has been stated, it is what Eve has been beguiled. Because she's a weak vessel. Today, pastor teachers are more worst than that Eve. Looking upon that tree to be beautiful, fruit to be desiring, having some knowledge to gain, that is what the pride of life. Pastors are so worse than that Eve. Because they don't dig and take the real, real content of Bible doctrine, preach the truth and stand by the truth. If the impact of a love is just one percent, the impact of truth and believing the truth and preaching the truth from the Bible doctrine has four thousand times greater than the impact of that love upon your spiritual standards, upon your mental thinking, upon your physical body. Therefore, Christ, the Lord of God, said, the words that I speak to you, they're truth, they're spirit, they're going to make you all to be quickening spirit. And every human being should understand, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Lord God. Therefore, what does he do? He has to take up his hand and get every thought into captivity for Christ. Making every thought into captivity for my Christ. And today, 
There is none who can remember the woe which Lord God the Father has given. In the great congregation he said, Lord, I will make thy name known to this people. I will introduce your name to this people. In Psalms chapter 22 in verse number 25, the same thing what has crowned us with glory and honor, he says in Hebrews chapter 2. I will make known your name on this to, unto this people, O Lord. But if we can look upon your salak, what we call moderation, epiakas, of Philippians 4, 5. How many people are really building up against any pressure? Discipleship program to be the wall of fortification in life. How many people they're really able to build up? Do you think, do they have any standards of thinking in this earth that could say we are really showing the moderation to God? How they can really rejoice? <laughs> People are thinking they can rejoice. Again, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. <laughs> How could you have that Cairo? When your blood is not able to overcome the pressure. And Satan loves to put you into pressure because Satan knows very well. <laughs> you know, the stupid things of this life today in a smartphone, what the people they are spending their time. At one end they want to communicate in WhatsApp, the other end they want to communicate in Instagram, at the other end they want to communicate in the Facebook, they want to communicate in Snapchat, whatsoever stupid things. And Satan has been so successful to make them to be trapped. They don't use those things for spreading the gospel of God. They love to build up all vanity of friendships, every fake of a thing. If they don't go to beauty parlor and spend money upon them, they will not look the way how they stand in the WhatsApp status or in the Instagram ID of your face. They don't look at all like that. It's an absolute fake. And in order to look they are beautiful, they have to spend some, some money or some dollars in the beauty parlor saloons so that they could look good in such a way. And you know, that's what it has made their minds to grasp that hypocritical theory, what we call hypocrisy. They're not able to look upon the mirror of the word of Lord God. If they would look upon the mirror of the word of Lord God, it would clearly say, this is what you are. This is what you look. This is what your appearance is all about. But you know, they have been daubing themselves with such makeups. And they would say to the world, we look like this. And the brain of them will conceive that image. And every time you look, they will be still appearing the same. They will be still appearing the same. Because the brain now thinketh, this is what I am looking in the mirror. The same thing though the truth is saying to them, this is what your life is, get every thought into captivity for Christ. So that you can realize and understand the impact of this word of Lord God, which says again and again that, Lord, if you give these people into my hand, how can you get those people into your hand? If you're not able to take first, what is the thought process in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, which the creator has made upon this man and how you're looking upon them? You're looking upon with hypocrisy. You're looking upon to sub subside them with the standards of their, their comforts rather than looking upon to say, this is the truth. Abide in it no matter what. Because if you are ashamed of the words of Lord God to be presented to the world today, when Christ, the Lord of God, could come, he said in, number, in Matthew chapter 10, that when he would come with his holy angels and God the Father, he would be ashamed of you because you did not go to confess the truth before the sinful and adulterous people. He would be ashamed of you. And you love to spend your time in the Snapchat, in the Instagram, in XYZ, or Facebook, or this or that. Satan has been so much successful rather than spending your time and writing the word of Lord God upon your knees like a scribe. Satan is so much successful. You know, the way how Satan kills away your time, you really never understand. When you get into your smartphone and look upon your WhatsApp, you look upon the things pertaining to your life, you will never realize how much of your time is gone there. The same time we should have invested to dig and study the word of Lord God. The same time which have invested to say, Lord, every day to us 40 minutes, it belongs unto you. No matter what, I will give the time for you. 
You make up that procedure day by day. You know, you people should have gone through that wilderness of Egypt. Forty years without food, the way how they grabbed and murmured. When the food was been there, it would come every early morning. The coriander seed like manna. And what they would do that manna? They would collect. If once the sun rays would come, it would go. It would not be there for a long time. So, dear brethren, they would be eagerly waiting for that manna because they don't have any other source apart from that. So, when this manna or the food was been availed for them, no matter whatever it is, they would simply go to grab and take. They wouldn't have waited for anything on this earth because they knew very well if this manna is not taken, then the whole day they will be in hunger. That's what it will be, dear brethren. Every time you go, you go to be, it will be the same thing for the word manna, what we can call over here. Because people have been not able to realize that if this manna, what you can call in the Hebrew, the word is again referring back to emeth. Emeth, it goes to be the truth. Because the word manna over here, it has been called to be the bread from heaven that fed the Israelites for 40 years of wilderness wandering. But the pictographical representation over here, it is called to be as the word, what is it? You know, the word manna meant to say, what is it? So here, if we can look upon the word, what we can call for manna, it is nothing but what kind of a word it is, how it is, or because of what it is, or you may have many, many things. But the pictographical representation in simple terms, it meant to say the truth. Emeth and manna have the same. Because the blood which has to be in your body has to take up the vigor and valor and there could be no vigor and valor in spite of eating all your dry fruits, all your medicines, all your things that could say that that would regenerate your body and give you some pleasure and give you some standards of vigor and valor. <laughs> all those things are stupid, he says. Because as Apostle Paul could say, Christ our Lord our God is the one who strengthens me. And through Christ, O oh Lord of a God, it is I who goes to do all the things. You know, that's the word manna. Your vigor and valor has been given. Proper word of Lord God to do the will of Lord God. That's what you're going to take up. So for 40 years, what they had every day, this manna. That meant to say what? The truth. That's the word amat. And that's the word amen. What we can find for all the things pertaining to the pictographical representation for this root. Your blood should be in the vigor and valor, in the energy of Lord, in the energy of Lord God's doctrine. That's manna. And for those forty years, when they couldn't find that food, they know how eagerly they go along. Every day morning they would wait. Today, where are you waiting for the manna? People would call spiritual manna. Even in the past, manna meant to say, "What is it?" And that is nothing but the truth. He teaches the lesson, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word which proceedeth out of the mouth of Lord God. He gave them that bread. But today people are not at all happy to find that bread because their hand is not able to grab in the daily prescribed manna for them. How your moderation will be made known to these people? How people will come to know that Lord God is near? When you don't grab your manna every day, just look upon the boys and the youth. In fact, indeed, every plague that could be stuck in the human race today is the smartphone. There could not be a great plague than the smartphone. Though it has its positive impact, it has also a very disastrous impact upon, a disastrous impact upon every small child to the elder one. Just look how much of your time you're appearing. If you'd have used that same time in learning the word of Lord God, in digging deep in the word of Lord God, people don't want that. People want that which is making them to be pleasing. And what is that that goes to please them? Lies. People have nothing but lies to be pleased. They don't have anything more than that. Every time what they love, they love to have lies, 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 lies. And who is constantly giving that lie? Satan. Why? Satan will never make you to look and dig and tip the word of Lord God. When you look deep down into the word of Lord God, you will understand the cunning fables of Satan. And as Apostle Paul said, we are not ignorant about the cunning fables of Satan. So you will be really available to look and to realize and to understand. 
that you shall not spend your time in vanity. You will get out of that smartphone first. But I have been trapped to such an extent that I don't even look upon in this life how much of time has been gone out. You know, every day you say, I will come weekly once to the church, that's enough. 52 hours for 52 weeks, then what? Only two days are going to pay back to Lord God the Father for his 365 days given to your account. Only two days you're going to pay back. <laughs> Therefore, he says, my pain is perpetual. How it is able to endure? Because you people are not able to become, to overcome that strength, the strength of the impact of Satan in your life. Because Satan is all the time making up to put pressure upon your life. It is able to build wrong wall of fortification in your life. So he said, my pain is perpetual. My wound, you know, the wound is nothing but your brother and what you can call over here as Makkah, M-A-K-K-A-H. That meant to say what slaughtering. What is that slaughtering? Your vigor and valor in your life is not a grammatical program to the Lord God. It's slaughtering. You know what Lord God the Father would say? You're going to make me slaughter. Why I have called you to join as disciples and grow up into grammatics, Matthew 13, 52. But here you can make up your life to say that you're slaughtering me. And why you're slaughtering me? Because there is no proper vigor and valor in you which could make to be grammatics program all the days of this life. Therefore, you cannot have your hand to grab them. That's what in Numbers 21 2 he said, Give these people in my hand, O Lord, to give you, give me, nothing, nothing. You give them to my hand. With the vigor and valor, what I have, with authority of your word of Lord God, Lord, give them to my hand. I will have them to me. I will make them to me. I will make my hand to get every thought into captivity for Christ. I will grab them and take it up for your glory on this earth. Give them to me. And you know why does he require that? Because the wound of Lord God shall not be perpetual. So in Numbers chapter 21, dear brethren, he would say in verse number 2, emphasizing the point that I will utterly destroy the cities. Destroy meant to say the thinking which they have already built up, the prejudiced minds you can call. The concept of belief, what they have, rationalism or empiricism, or in fact even indeed called as faith, because some of the miracles that Satan does to make them to deceive. So they say, this is God, let's go there, let's tie up this, let's do that. You know, the same thing even Deuteronomy chapter 13, he said, even if your own prophet would say such and such, don't believe him, because the thing what he has told it has come to pass, and now he's saying, let's go away from Yahweh Elohim, then you should be the first to kill him. You shall throw him out from your city, cast him out. Because he's diverting you from the real word of God. And the real word of Lord God demands discipleship program. And there are many people who are far away from real word of Lord God to be discipleship program in Christ. So he says, cast them out, throw them out. They're not worth for you. You should be the first to put your hand and kill them out. That's why you know you may be having this word called to be self for motivation. It's not others, but self. Self meant to say what? You. The same thing what he said. Take up your cross for yourself. Not anyone. You yourself has to rise up and take up your cross. That's self. So dear brethren, he said, will destroy, destroy the wall of fortification, destroy their thinking, destroy the things that are giving priority in their blood. Change them in the direction of the word of Lord God. Lead them in the path of Christ. Because you have a woe to fulfill. If there is no nadar o, what we can find over here, it meant to say, in their vigor and valor to get every thought into the renovated standards of Bible doctrine. If they don't have this, then why would Lord God the Father deliver you out of this earth? From the bondages of sicknesses, from the bondages of every pressure that could be upon your head. Your financial problems, your physical problems, your every problem, social problems, any problems of your life. Why, do, why would Lord God the Father would deliver you? And how is your moderation be made known to all men who are going to look upon you? 
The creation is saying you have to become a discipleship program orientation in the churches. It's eagerly waiting because disciples who have been trained up into grammatias in return can go and make disciples of all the nations. But today there is no sign of discipleship program because you people are not able to realize who is a true Christian. A true Christian is a disciple being taught for more than one year. As Acts 11 defines, those trained disciples for the first time were called Christians in the church. Those trained disciples. But you know what we're finding today? We don't have disciples at all. And we don't find any true Christians at all. <laughs> These are simply nominal, conventional, weekly, yearly, monthly coming Christians to the church. And the pastors, they are preaching also to get their income satisfied because the, they should run their life and the, and the show should be run or business should be running. In the name of God, they are daubing you with untempered mortar. They are plucking from you the things pertaining to what we can call as money. Giving you false hope, giving you false satisfactions. Telling you God will bless you. God will never bless you. Without obeying his word, without fulfilling his mandates, Lord God the Father is never happy. Though Samuel and Moses in this chapter of Jeremiah 15, he would say, though they can stand, I will never hear them. Why these people that have made with me such sort of a perpetual sins? My wound is incurable. And he calls them what? These are liars together. A waters that cannot be making up resting or quenching my thirst. The same cry, what he cries on this Good Friday, people will celebrate. I thirst. The same thirst is there. Waters that cannot heal me. Waters that cannot clear my thirst. Why? Because you have become kazeb, liars. Who are liars? Because they are never grammatious program in the law. And in this grammatious program, when they have failed your brethren, he meant to say these people as the word, they fail to dig and take every day the Bible doctrine. Their body is not associated for that. Therefore, they go not to give you the truth. The word, what he says over here, emphasizing the waters that fail, meant to say what? These waters which should actually give a great expression of joy in my body. And the word fail, meant to say what? Healing or rafa. No, it meant to say again, the word over here as Ameth, or the word could be as Aman, meant to say what? They don't give that pleasure. The same thing what manna is all about. They don't give that pleasure. How would your moderation be made known to man? And people are so stupidly talking on this earth. We Christians are showing with signs <laughs> put upon the cross. <laughs> but not really carrying our cross in the Lord God. So the moderation, dear brethren, epi ekas, which is called over here as salak, and that meant to say what, no matter whatever may be the pressure, build up a discipleship program, build up a wall of fortification for Christ, because Lord God the Father, as in Numbers chapter 21, in verse number 2, He has delivered us out from the world, so that we can destroy, we can utterly destroy, kerem, the thinking of the world, because the cities are called over here to be filled with distorted thinking. And they constantly guide their mind for distorted thinking in this life. So what we have, we have the truth. What the world has, <laughs> no truth. Therefore Christ, the Lord our God, said, I delivered you out of this world. You are not of the world, as I am not of the world. So what you have to be sanctified with the truth, which is the book of the book. It is called to be the majestic, glorious book. It is not just an ordinary one, what the people are thinking. It is your eternal life. It is one of the outstanding unique book in possession for the entire human race. It has been read by the millions in hundreds of languages. It is the book of glory, for it has a glory which no other book in the wide world has, nor ever can have. It is the book of eternity, for it reveals what man by searching could never know. The decrees of a sovereign Lord God made before the foundation of the world. It lifts the veil of eternity to come and reveals the destiny of mankind and the future manifestation of God as creator. In producing a new heaven and a new earth, it is the book in which God 
God comes down to man, even down to the deepest misery, sin and human helplessness to meet his need and to bring him back into an and not into an eternal e earthly Eden, but as a member of the family of God, into the Father's house above. It is the book of power. If what Jeremiah had said once has been done, the words were found and I did eat them. If that blessed bread come down from heaven is taken and absorbed, it will give strength and power to live, to serve, to suffer and to die. It will guide and direct. It will wipe away tears away. Such a book you have in the Lord's mind given for us, being protected over so many years. In the silent period, from there on, we find the New Testament composition from AD 320 after that Nicene Creed of uh, the people coming together and the Dubai Ramos's Bible, which goes on to be the first in the 400, B 400 AD translation, translation to 1611 King James Version, protection, 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 because the Protestant Bibles which have come up to look upon the 95 theses which they failed to answer. You have this great eternal glorious book in your hand. And you don't know still how to be delivered from such stupid lives on this earth. Though you become grammatious or not, creation will be still awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons. In order to become the manifestation of the adult sons, the very first thing, dear brethren, take up your cross. Come to do the will of Lord God the Father accurately day by day. Don't waste the valuable grace of Lord God which is given for you on this earth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God the Holy Ghost leadeth us. To the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head, bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In audible telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of his soul that he believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour, that's the moment itself. We shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple, believing Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace man is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine, that with you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teaches the grace man is to carry Satan Lagan. Herald the word in season out of sin because of the Dharma to my witnesses where they have been called. The number one Dharma to my witnesses in will and trinity for the Bible in our hands. And number two Dharma to my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, they will not worry besides nature. The entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being grateful and thankful for the privilege of the Lord which you have given to us to have fellowship with through the Word. Help us, Sovereign Lord, to show our motivation being made known to all men, so that, Father, the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of the adult sons, and that our Lord have delivered us free from all the stupid things of this life, so that we can fulfill a vast force and make these people to look at to realize the distorted thinking what they have in their minds has to be cleansed out by giving proper and accurate Bible doctrine the original languages of the scriptures. So, Father, being grateful and thankful once again to learn your mind, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Ghost to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. The Lord God the Holy Spirit challenges by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen.